Rod, Rod, Rod. How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing great. How are you guys doing? I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> I'm pumped too. I'm, first... I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Yeah, my first radio interview. Does it trip you out when people are like, dude, I'm a huge fan of your videos? Every day that someone says it, which is like once a week. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, I mean, obviously pandemic, no one's like out and about, but yeah, just, it's a humbling experience too, just because I, it, with social media, you don't know who you're reaching, you know, right. so face to face with people. So it's I so funny. Like, I'm, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling on your Instagram and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my life. Literally my life. I actually like, there is one video and it takes a lot out of me to sit and reply to a video and i'm sure your dms are probably overwhelming right now but i was like <laughs> lol 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 can't wait to talk to you next mm -hmm. monday what's yeah. the craziest dm that you've ever heard from anyone oh the amount of people that have some sort of opinion on my facial hair or hairline which is like i have no control over i mean i guess my facial hair i can like shave but whenever i shave it's like the world's crumbling <laughs> I've never done that it's like oh my goodness like um but the, the coolest DM is this group of teachers DM'd me. Mm -hmm. Like all of them copy and pasted the same DM to make sure that I saw it. Mm -hmm. But they said they showcased my TikToks at um, like a school-wide function, which I'm mm -hmm. like, I never thought I would have resonated with teachers because they talk so much about like working in corporate America. Right. But I'm, I'm this like random school and I was favorite TikToker. So shout out to... Um, Ames High School, if you're listening to this. <laughs> well, it's really interesting because I feel like a lot of the teachers are probably millennials right now, and they probably get the same stress and anxiety that we get. Did you ever think that it would get this big? Never. Never. No. I, last October, just started, like, what was it, five months ago? Not even? I don't know. Um, time's fake right now. So. Yeah, doesn't even exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. I just made a TikTok, and it started growing, and I just saw that anxiety was such an untouched topic in millennials just because we were kind of put in like it was put in our head that anxiety and therapy and all this isn't real you know it's just mm -hmm. like you're a certain person and so now it's a little bit more normalized but people still don't talk about it so i think just the fact that someone saw oh my gosh i'm not the only one who has an irrational fear of getting fired every day for no reason it's kind of created this community on tiktok would you say that i say this i want to know if you agree being a millennial that we've created anxiety we i think we've created anxiety but not by not talking about our anxiety mm. Does that makes sense because I, I remember growing up like whenever we talked about you hear the word therapy therapy was kind of like a like a scarlet a you know that mm -hmm. people didn't really talk about just because it was um like you needed help you know but it's like yeah you need help and that's fine you know like a therapist is really like you could be perfectly fine and still go to therapy because it's you, it's not, it's no harm to anyone for, for you just to have an unbiased opinion to talk to and to, to share your feelings and your thoughts with and for them to give you some guidance. So let's talk about the actual concepts of the videos, because it's something that I feel like resonates with everyone. Like even when I get an email from my boss and it's just like, come see me in the subject line, I freak out, which is crazy. Like what's going to happen? Am I going to get fired? Like what's, so what made you even decide to even put those videos on TikTok or the whole concept behind them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it was just the fact that I, I, I threw one out into the universe, which I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to just talk about how I have this random anxiety of getting fired today for no reason. And then it went viral for the better use of the term. But I saw that other people felt that way. So I said, you know what? Let's keep trying another one. Does anyone else pretend to use ex pretend like they know how to use Excel today when or every day when they don't actually know how to use it. And yep, a <laughs> hundred thousand people felt the same way. So <laughs> I kept like seeing these, these things that we all encountered together um, or the feeling that if you didn't get enough work done in that day, you felt like you had to work overtime. No one's requiring you to do that your boss isn't expecting it, but you in your head, your imposter syndrome is telling you this. So the imposter syndrome is such a real thing that people just started, I think, resonating with it more and more. And now it's become this big joke. The, the funniest, kind of go back to your first question about my DMs, the funniest DMs are people who <laughs> tell me, hey man, your content's funny, but I have to unfollow you because you're giving me more anxiety. I think really? I think those are my favorite ones to get. It's like, I didn't know that this anxiety was a thing until you mentioned it. And now that's a new anxiety I have. So I think it's time for me to bow out. I'm like, all right, respect. That's <laughs> so honest. funny. It's yeah. so funny because you know what, when watching the videos, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my life. Like, why is this my life? Do all millennials have the same life? Are we all dealing with the same thing at work? It's crazy. 
it's crazy. Yeah. I think that's like you said, it's like you get an email from your boss, teachers to um, athletes. Like there's athletes who are like, oh my gosh, so relatable. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I guess it's like just such a, such a power. But then kind of to go back to my own personal life, my boss, after they, they found my CEO released my TikTok, one of my TikToks on a company-wide meeting a couple of weeks ago without even me knowing. <laughs> I know it was crazy. And I'm like, Ugh. so now my entire company knows about my TikTok. It was so funny. And he was, my, they're, they've been amazing about it. But my boss messaged me later and he was like, hey, just a heads up how you feel about like me. I feel about my boss. And he's like, I have no Shut way. Up. Yeah. So it's just like a thing that, that people feel all the time. Do you talk about what do you do as your like real life grown up job or is that off limits? No, we can talk about it. I, I, I mean, I am, uh, I work in technology sales. Mm hmm. So it's just a very, in like a startup environment, um, but more corporate for sure. And it's sales is the most anxiety inducing job. So I'm like, <laughs> why am I doing this? But I, I enjoy connecting with people and, and relating and, and meeting new types of, of people as well. What's the most stressed out thing that you've heard from a supervisor and you're like, oh my gosh, today's the day, I'm done. They, um, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than getting the question, especially working from home because you're not seeing your boss face to face. They don't know what you're working on unless they're looking at your calendar. Um, hey, what did you work on today? That's the worst. I, like my, my heart drops every time I hear that question. I'm like, this is it. I'm, what, I'm ready for, for it to happen. Today's the day. And today's the day that I just completely solely focus on my TikTok and try to make money from this. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the most common question I get though. Is when are you really? Quitting? Yeah. When are you quitting and doing your TikToks? I'm like, you understand if I quit, I wouldn't have TikToks to make. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let me keep my real job that got some benefits and stuff. Relax. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what do you like to do in your free time? Love to work out. I actually went through um, kind of a major weight loss a couple of years ago, which kind of, I, you didn't ask for it, but my backstory is I was bullied in high school and college, um, really insecure, pushed me to be overweight and I had a herniated disc and and just did not feel like a secure human. Um, and then one day I just started walking and then running and then working out. And now working out has become a big part of my life just to feel healthy and to kind of have an outlet for my anxiety and my stress. Um, so I really enjoy working out. I enjoy running. Um, I enjoy cooking a lot and hanging out with my family. Really? Are you guys all, are you from Chicago? I'm from Chicago. Yep. Gonna pack it up and move to LA. And yeah, <laughs> we went to LA for the first time a couple of weeks ago. I'd never been. Really? Yeah, and I loved it. I loved it. I just I, I never went out west. Yeah, my family was more of a Florida kind of family. So when I went, it was amazing. I mean, you have you have the mountains, you have the beach. I love mountains. Chicago is so flat. Like I'm looking out my apartment window on the third floor, and I can see like three miles from here. It's That's how I felt when I lived in Dallas. Like Texas is so flat and you can just see for miles and miles and miles and miles. Back to you in LA, what did you do when you were here? Yeah, um, I was able to, so I actually, since doing all this too, it's kind of cool. I've been able to connect with a manager. So now I have a manager who's helping me just because I am working my, my nine to five job too, but he's been helping me with certain career path stuff and, and where I want, what I want to do long-term. I was able to meet him, definitely did some hiking, did some beachfront, um, activities just hung out on the beach and I was able to meet other TikTokers that I hadn't actually met in person. I've met so many virtually and it was really cool to meet them in person and, and to be able to connect. Cause I feel like we're friends, you know, because we talk every day or every other day, run TikTok ideas by each other, or just complain about whatever. And to be able to meet in person, it was like, we, we had known each other for, for a whole year. Watching your uh, TikToks and Instagrams. I feel like that you're a huge fan of the nineties, please. Be a huge oh, yes. oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's how I started my, uh, my whole niche is just based off like these early 2000s, late nineties jams that no one knew about or not, no, not no one knew about, no one remembered. Right. And so I was started playing people like Samantha Mumba or like some really throwback Britney. Did I see um, a David Archuleta song in there or something? That like was that? this weekend. And <laughs> David Archuleta commented on my TikTok. Which was yeah. Shania Twain followed me on TikTok. That was probably the biggest moment I've had so far. Shania Twain followed me on TikTok. That's so amazing. That's so great. Okay, so I want to know, what are your thoughts on the Meghan and Harry interview? Okay, so I've loved Suits forever. Mm -hmm. um, like since season one. So I watched from season one until when Megan left. And after that, it didn't mean anything to me because she was it. She was like the reason I kept watching it. So I thought that the interview I did, 
I did think that some of it was like, I don't think it was fully raw. I think some of it was definitely not staged, but they prepared for. Absolutely. Staged. Because Megan's, the whole... Megan's an actress. Oprah's an act. Like at the end of the day, Oprah's an actress. So like definitely they, they prepared and absolutely. But I do, I don't know. I just, after watching the crown too, maybe it's just, I have no like actual, like <laughs> it's all semi-fictional what I've seen from these people, but I just the I think the royal family man can, they can they can move some stuff around and they can make <sighs> some stuff happen. Ever ever since then, like I'm looking at these major news outlets here in the states, like these like pop culture news outlets, they're talking more about the royal family, about Kate and William, about the Queen than they have before, and not in a bad light. So I'm like, is what's happening to the British media happening to the U.S. media now to kind of turn the crown around and make the crown look like it's a, a good light? Because even I saw an article the other day that definitely pinned Kate as more of a savior than Megan. So I'm like, are we going through the same thing that the British media went through? Really interesting. I was watching some of that and I was like, <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Like, cause it's in your highlights now. And I had the same facial reactions that, that you had. I was like, yeah. <laughs> skin complexion. Exactly. That? Exactly. Yeah. The skin I, I wouldn't get down to the bottom of that. Killed me. Yeah. I was, I'm just so passionate about that in general as like we all should be, but just like the fact that it was more of, how are you going to tell someone how to feel? That's, that's been my whole thing with it is like people like, well, like what I'm not going to name names, but the fact that people are, are telling someone how they should, how they should feel when it comes to what they thought their, their, their child's skin color be portrayed as that's not your right. Exactly. So that, that was, that was the worst part for me. There are like the other parts about like the, the safety, that was another big one. Um, but I think what really tied it all together that it's probably true is Harry's not an idiot. Harry's smart. And I feel like Harry wouldn't want to paint his family in a bad light. Absolutely. So that's what kind of tied it together for me. I did. Yeah, it's funny. I, I did bachelor recaps for a while um, at the first up, couple episodes of the season, the series, the season. And I'd never watched bachelor before. And then my recap people loved. So I started recapping other random things like the Grammys and then the Royal, the Royal interview. Do you consider yourself like a funny person? I didn't think I was until October. Um, but now I have, a, uh, my manager is a comedy manager. So I think I kind of have to. <laughs> I'm writing a TV pilot. I'm working on writing a TV pilot. Let's so talk about that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's not picked up or anything. It's just kind of a passion project. But um, it's going through its first round of edits right now. And it's been kind of cool to take my, it's my real life experience. It's just about me like an average 30 year old who's working with Gen Z's and Zillennials and kind of having to relate to them on a different level um, as this 30 year old who's working in an environment full of younger people. Why does Gen Z make millennials seem so old? God. Think about it. We did the same thing. Remember when <laughs> our parents got on Facebook? We got off. Remember we're like, no, nah, Facebook's dumb. That's like what's happening now. We're like we're but then we we got so mad when our parents got on Facebook because that was our thing. So like yeah. Gen so upset because TikTok was Gen Z's thing. But now I'm probably not, they probably all hate me because I'm like CEO of millennials or whatever. They're probably like this guy's the ringleader and I'm probably the just, ringleader. I'm gonna find a re find a reason for me to get canceled any day now. I'm like, that's what I wake up every morning. I'm like, is today the day to get canceled? <laughs> if, I, if I didn't work, if I didn't work and have the anxiety of getting fired every day, it would be am I gonna get canceled today? That would be my new fear, I feel like. You know what's funny? I, I, I'm going to say this, but we'll probably get in trouble for it. But I feel like the most popping people on TikTok are millennials. Really? I think so. Who's your favorite creator? No, like, I'm like, you don't have to say me. On TikTok? Yeah. I guess, I guess this person's a Gen Z there then. Who is it? I just thought about it. I think Addison Ray is dope. Oh, I, Addison Ray is beautiful. She's like funny. And they're not problematic. None of them are. Like they're all like pretty like down to earth people. It seems like they're just young. And I feel like we have such a hard time as millennials seeing them as young people that we once were too. Um, Forget you, watch, you. You're still young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you watch? Uh, have you seen Brittany Broski at all? Do you watch any? No. Uh. Uh. You did you do you remember that kombucha meme that went out? That girl was drinking kombucha for the first time. Uh. Uh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'll send it to you. But yeah. She's. Um, probably one of my favorite TikTokers. She was one of the first big creators on TikTok too. Um, so that's like my side of TikTok that I'm on. I feel like TikTok like has like big creators that you follow and then that's how it kind of like subdivides you. So like people who follow Addison Ray and Charlie are obviously gonna be on that side of TikTok. People who follow me will be on like corporate TikTok, you know, so there's like different sides of TikTok you can be on. It's so funny like how it's like great, um, 
basically divided into subdivisions of TikTok sure. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For sure. <sighs> Are you having fun? Like with all of this? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, sometimes it's it's different for me. I've never been a creator. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, like even before like the Instagram that I have up that was like new like I didn't have an Instagram I just started putting my reels on there so like I've never sought out virality um so there is times with where it just gets a little stressful because I'm like I feel the need to have to please people because mm-hmm. I'm such a people pleaser naturally you know you like are. I'm the first friend to call and if they're just to make sure that someone so you could be in a, if we were let's say we were friends you could we are friends let's say you were in a fight with someone else, I would still feel the need to call you and ask if you were mad at me for me not even doing anything. Does that make really? sense? Like, oh yeah, that's just, but that's, an, that's another common millennial one. A lot of people- What's your birthday? May 20th, I'm a, I'm a Gemini. Okay, well, yeah. okay. So here's the thing. I, I am the type of person, like let's say you and I are friends, right? Mm-hmm. You're mad at someone else, right? Mm-hmm. So I am also mad at someone else. Yes. Even though yes. someone else has, I've <laughs> never done anything to me. I am are mad. You, are you a Capricorn? I'm a Pisces. Oh, okay. Well, we would get along very well. Pisces and I, like, we get along very well. I think we're um, best friends now. We're best. <laughs> we are best friends now. But no, I, I am having fun. At, like, and my followers always surprise me. That they're like, dude, take a break. We love you. You know, it's like I, for the amount of people I see to get hate on the internet, I probably get like one hate comment a week. You know. I definitely sit on that hate comment more than the positive ones as people do, but yeah, I'm very grateful for my followers and the people that support me. What do people say about you? Like the hate, and you know, what's funny. I would tailor to the hate comments because the fact that someone is felt so moved to write something negative about you and don't necessarily know you. Like, I feel like they are almost better than the people that support you. Yeah. Yep. It's just kind of like someone sought me out today because they did a, a razor ad. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, of course, had a shave and I posted it. And this woman sought me out. She sent, she didn't even reply to the story. She went back to the story, sent me the story and said, hard pass, never shave again. And I was like, you had to like go out of your way. Right. Exactly. But one of my friends gave me a really, um, really good piece of feedback whenever you get a hate comment like that. If you feel the need to respond, saying, how do you feel after you said that? Cause some people like, like someone might say, I feel great. You're like, awesome. I'm glad you're able to get that out of your system or whatever. I hope you have a great day. Or people often reflect on it. It's like, wow. Okay. Shoot. I probably didn't have the need to say that. So I, See, she that, left, she left me on red, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's that. such an adult thing to think of. Cause I would have been like, <laughs> you know, like the, like my thumbs are on fire. I'm typing, but it's like, who are you to say what I should do with my, but then at the end of the day, it's like, she nope, just cuss them out. Cuss them out. Call it a day. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'll get canceled. <laughs> Maybe that's why I haven't gotten canceled yet because I like avoid conflict so hard. Not cussing people out yet. <laughs> so what's next besides the uh, show? Yeah, that's, I think that's it now. Um, keep working. I, I want to be successful in my career still. You know, I want to be be the guy that people followed me for, which is um, a coworker. I feel like that's what most people view me as is their coworker. So I never want to lose that and would love to get into more, um, hosting type things. Um, I was almost a communications major. And then someone, when I was in college told me that I didn't have the face for TV or the voice for radio. So I just quit that. And have you heard my voice? <laughs> you sound great. You have a very no. Voice. <laughs> no, 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 it's fake. You can do it. You can definitely do it. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it's who's to say this is still relatively new. You know, my biggest fear is that this will go away tomorrow. And if it does, I had a good ride with it, you know, and you have a real job. That's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> Do you have a real job? Everyone has a real job. I mean, it's I how can, real you want to make it. Yeah. An adult daycare center, what we do, but you know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, yeah. just taking the time and chatting with us. Thank you so much, Rod. Of course. It was really great chatting with you, AJ.